All right, Rich Folly, PBS Bookview Now. We're here at the Miami Book Fair 2016. It's been an amazing day. It's been a very busy day here. And we are still going strong. And we have Faith Aaron Hicks here, who's written a beautiful new graphic novel called The Nameless City. Welcome. So nice to have you. Thank you for, yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, The Nameless City is a really cool book to me. It was my, as I mentioned to you off camera, it was my introduction to your work. But I know that you've written a lot of contemporary stuff, often set in high schools and, and you know, teenage world. And so this was taking it to another place. It's like sort of a fictional Asian city um, and that you got to create this entire world. Talk about the switch from going from <laughs> that world um, to the nameless city. And that world, by the way, the adventures of superhero girl, friends with boys, nothing can possibly go wrong, modern times, high school, all very different from nameless city. What was that? What precipitated that jump? Well, uh, I basically got really burned out on drawing school lockers. Uh, I had done two contemporary high school graphic novels, uh, Friends with Boys, and then uh, followed that up with Nothing Can Possibly Go Wrong, both set in you know, contemporary high schools. And I very much enjoyed drawing those books, but by the time I got to the end of Nothing Can Possibly Go Wrong, which is a really long book, like 280 pages, I was like, that's it, no yep. more school lockers. If I have to draw like, another hallway and there's like, lockers on either side, I'm going to scream. Um, you know, because I like being challenged. I like drawing different things. I don't want to draw the same thing. This is challenging. Yeah, I don't want to draw the same thing over and over again. Landscapes. Yeah, and so I just decided to do this fantasy graphic novel trilogy um, set in this this world that is based on 13th century China, uh, and also a little bit based on on the Silk Road. So. Yeah, and there's like tiled rooftops, and I spent many hours drawing those. So sometimes I, sometimes I thought, oh, it would be nice to go back to draw simple high school lockers. But I very much enjoyed drawing. You've crossed book. over now. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> want more. You know, you mentioned rooftops. There's a mm -hmm. rooftops play a big part in the in the nameless city. There's like, um, it, I didn't know a lot about this until most most recently. But parkour, which is like jumping from building to building and jumping off buildings under the ground and running and just, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of running and a lot of jumping in The Nameless City. Where did that come from? And I'm curious about when you're drawing that to kind of get, I mean, rooftops became such a sort of a star of this book to some degree. Yeah, I mean, I really wanted to do a book that was action and adventure, but also have the action not be like violent or violence-based. Um, so not like hand-to-hand -hand combat or sword fighting. And there is violence in this book and there is fighting, um, but I wanted the primary action, the through line throughout this entire book to be like the freedom of exploring and finding new paths throughout this, this ancient city. Um, so yeah, that was, that was where my, my inspiration came from. Well, and then the two characters are really wonderful too. I mean, obviously we're following along with Rat, who's like the, the savvy city person who knows her way around everything, and Kai, who's actually an one of the invaders, mm -hmm. you know, who this city has been invaded a number of times, but now is in this city and still attracted to Kai, like mm -hmm. there's like a connection there, but they're obviously on opposite sides of the fence. That is a really interesting dynamic. I'd love to hear more about, as you're putting together the story about the, the characters and f how you found your protagonists. Yeah, I mean, I, I initially the very nugget the, the, the initial inspiration for the story was I wanted to draw, write and draw a story about two kids who are from the opposite sides of a complicated political conflict. And the Nameless City is a complicated environment. It's a city that is thousands of years old and very important to trade throughout this, this fictionalized world that, that I've created. Um, so it's fought over endlessly because whoever controls the city controls the flow of trade, enriches, enriches their particular nation. Um, so yeah, like that was uh, the complicated political conflict that in these two kids are on the opposite sides of this conflict. Um, so yeah, they meet and they form kind of a combative friendship and uh, initially Kai has to basically bribe Rat in order to get her to interact with him, but then their relationship becomes more, more friendly as they get to know each other. Um, but yeah, like I, I wanted to do um, a story that's set in a very multicultural society and also important, most importantly, a city. Um, you know, just growing up, and uh, I grew up in a small town and then moved to a city for work, uh, and then have just recently moved to another city for uh, my partner's work. And it's like, I feel like as adults, that's what we do. You know, we go to cities, we meet new people, we are exposed to new viewpoints, to, um, yeah, different perspectives, and that's something really wonderful about cities, and that was what I wanted to um, infuse this work with. Yeah, you talked about, it's not violence per se, mm. but there is fighting, there mm. is, I mean, these are, these are warring factions, obviously, that are happening. This is a city of vital importance, that mm -hmm. trade route, so that there's, there is some violence, yeah. and, and, and there is, 
uh, sort of takeover and, and mm. all of that and, and people being displaced and, and, and all of that. So as I was thinking about this Petty story... Petty stuff for a kid. Yeah, stuff. it really yeah, is. So, yeah. but, but you seem to navigate that pretty well through the, the friendship between the two kids. But it isn't like you hid what's mm -hmm. really going on in the background. Talk about that dichotomy, too. Yeah, like that was very important to me. Um, you know, I, I wanted to do a story where it was like there was no easy answers to the political conflict. Um, there was um, strife and there was potential violence and there is um, elitism and racism and that kind of thing. And, and I wanted to address those issues, hopefully address them in a way that, that child, you know, kids would understand. Um, but, you know, it was important for me not to sugarcoat those issues and confront them as hopefully as, as boldly as I could. Um, yeah, so that was, that was really what I was aiming for when I, when I wrote and drew the book. And when you jumped in, did you have any idea, I mean, how, how long of the series was going to be? Did you have it all mapped out? Do you know where you want to go with this series now? Because now we're in mm -hmm. and, you know, you've left it behind and we're following along. How, how many books do you think and how, or how many how long do you think the series will be? Uh, three total, yeah. So, I mean, the world is large and complicated, and if the series is, is successful, it would be awesome to do more stories within this world. Uh, but these characters and their stories, uh, it's definitely four books. Mm -hmm. uh, those are, the second book is actually done already. Uh, it will be published in the spring, and then I'm, right now I'm frantically working on the third book. Um, but yeah, it's, really, it's been really exciting to do a trilogy. It's my first time doing a trilogy up until this point. Uh, I've only done standalone graphic novels, so it's wonderful to really dive into this world and see the characters grow as I continue their story. It's, it's been a really exciting project. So did, tell, tell me more about that. I'm, I'm curious. So did you know the dynamic? I mean, when you were starting to write these characters, do you let them sort of determine where, where they're going and growing? Do you let, like just sort of follow them? Or are you, are you pretty much certain where you're going to go with these characters? Um, it was a little of both. I had their character arcs mapped out, um, but I mean, that's been part of the, the wonderful experience of making a, a longer form graphic novel series rather than just doing a standalone book. It's that I get to know the characters better and sometimes their arcs do change a little. Um, and yeah, that's just been a really cool experience. I've never had that experience before. You talked about frantically working earlier. Yes. That, I mean, obviously you're drawing and you're writing and you're doing, you know, you're do, you do both. So mm. tell me about the combination and, and, and how do you, what's the order of things and and as you, are you drawing first or writing first? How does that all work together? Um, I do my scripts first. Uh, when I initially work, I actually go and I'll buy like a pad of lined paper, like just cheap lined paper, notepad paper from uh, you know my local staples or whatever. And I'll do like a really rough draft of the book with stick figures and writing in the dialogue by hand. And then I write my script uh, and then I move to penciling, so doing the rough drawings of the book. And then I ink the drawings, scan them into my computer, send them off to my colorist. She colors them. And ta-da, like four years later, you have a graphic novel. It is like a <laughs> long, long time. Yeah, I it, mean, I can... It's I can, an exhausting process when oh you yeah. think about it. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's a challenge. It's absolutely what I love to do. The fact that I get to wake up every day and draw comics for a living is so wonderful and so exciting. Um, but yeah, it's a complicated... Um, it's like running a marathon. It's a complicated process. And it's not for people who aren't patient, you know, not for comics are not for the week, definitely. Um, so yeah, every day I'm just getting up and drawing page after page and, you know, putting one foot, one foot in front of the other, trying to get this marathon, get this marathon run. Yeah, it does feel like a marathon to yeah. me as I think about it. I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, you have to have an immense amount of patience, but you have to be obviously talented first and foremost, but, <laughs> Thank you. but then, and, it, and you do have to love it because mm. th it is a, it is a daily step-by-step -step process, yeah. you know? And yeah, it is. And, you know, there are some days where it's like, I've been drawing this comic for 12 hours and I can't, you know, 12 hours today and I can't stand it. I've been sitting at my drawing desk since like eight in the morning until eight at night. I just can't draw another page. Like there are days like that. Don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think that there's anything else I'd want to do. Yeah. I think it's just really exciting to be able to do this. And the community is always so impressive to me. Now, yeah. we, right when uh, earlier we had uh, authors coming in and out and Kelly Barnhill was leaving uh, I was coming in and Amy Ignatow was here and she said, yeah, some of the cartoonists are getting together. Some of the you know, yeah. comic people are getting together tonight. And while there's a blend happening right now in literature, there's still a really strong 
drawing community and cartoon community and, and graphic novel community that just seems really powerful and it's very yeah. supportive. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's a small industry. There's not a lot of people who make comics and are able to make comics for a living. So, yeah, we kind of bond together and yeah. we, we find each other at cons. Doing and the also, shows. Yeah, yeah, doing the comic convention circuit. And also we're pretty scattered, you know, across the U.S. and across Canada. And when we get to come together at the Miami Book Fair or San Diego Comic Con or wherever, um, I don't know, it's like a meeting of the minds and it's wonderful to see each other. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really cool. Are these kind of events like this one, are they like a, a joyful respite for you? Or are you like, I gotta get back to the, the, the <laughs> panels. I'm like way, way behind. A little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I love, yeah, I love, I love coming to these type of events, meeting readers. Uh, I've met so many like enthusiastic, excited kids today, today and yesterday, and that's been really wonderful. Um, but yeah, like in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh no, the deadline's coming. Got to get back to work. Right. Well, I'm not going to crack the whip on you. That'll be for you. <laughs> but, but we are excited, and I love the work. It's so worth it. I mean, I know how much work goes into this. It's so obvious when you look through it. Um, just what goes into these, and it's way more than we all understand as readers. But the Nameless City is a great new series for you, and a great jump, and also. And I mean that more than just parkour jump. It's a cool <laughs> thing. And I'm very excited about the next one. It's really beautiful. And awesome. it's so cool to meet you here. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you for having thanks me. Thanks so much. Faith Aaron Hicks, who's the author of The Nameless City, here at the Miami Book Fair.